Hello and welcome to part four of this Vox 125 head. And you can see that uh, I have done some work to this amplifier, so I've fitted another output transformer, the one we've got on here. And it's time to start wiring it up. And the problems with this amp just go on and on. It just seems determined to not be resurrected. It wants to stay in the grave. But I'm having none of it. It's a constant battle and I'm going to win. Right, so we've got this, this turned over and you can see that there's, if you watched part three, well, the, all the other parts, you can see there's been some, some slight changes on this. Now this is the mounting for the jack sockets on the speakers, which was hanging on a load of wires before um, I put this transformer in. Obviously I snipped those off when I took out the old transformer, which you remember blue while it was sat on the bench on test so obviously now I've got to connect these wires to this we've got an extra tap in now on here we've got 4, 8 and 16 sorry 4 and 8 now we've got 16 to go in and we're going to just put another jack socket in that fuse holder there we might as well use it remember we've moved the fuses down to this end so we've got the transformer, we, we're going to get the wiring done and we are going to get this amp fired up. It seems, this amp seems hell bent on not allowing me to get it running, but I am going to get it running and we are going to get it boxed up and finished. Right, so I'll crack on and then we'll come back in a, in a bit and we'll have another look. Right, I've got a bit more of this wired up and uh, I've wired up all the power supply now. So I've just got the secondaries to do and the negative feedback. And we should be good to go but what I have done now put a tiny little bit of voltage through this uh, there's no tubes in it either so I have put in and I'll show you what I've got you'll see on the meter so that's coming in from the rectifiers we've got 19 volts so if we follow that all the way down here to the center to there yeah we've got that so if we go 19 volts there let's just check that we've got that on uh yeah 19 volts just check we've got that on our uh, coupling on our capacitors there and yeah we'll have half on there because that's in series so we're back to there and then we go across to there so that's feeding the screens 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 there, 19, pin 4, check the plates while we're at it, yeah, 19 on there, 19 on that screen, 19 on, on that plate, yeah, 19 on that plate, screen there, 19, the other screen underneath, let's just hone in on him, he's there, and he's there 19 volts so that gets us from the screens now we move on to the phase inverter the 19 volts there on the phase inverter let's go um, the phase inverter that's the cap capacitor there for the phase inverter as well we know that's all connected up now we go back we'll move the meter now onto this side so that's a plate that's good and pin six that's a plate yeah so we've got power to the phase inverter move this back here make sure you can see it should be able to yeah so that now takes us down to this node here 18.94 yeah that's good and that comes off of this one here yeah so we know the cap's working because the cap cap's connected there that's good and we work his way down there's a plate resistor here that's good and the plate resistor there yep yeah. and there another plate resistor and then if we go to these caps on this sorry on here on this plate got plates on there plates working on there plate on there and on that one just to the other tube 
yeah just make sure they are so yeah we've gone to the tubes and then these capacitors that we put in should have the volt yep yeah. so we've got voltage to everything so just click that down now and turn that off that's a, just a tiny little bit of voltage so that tells us that everything is connected up properly and we're just going to wire up this transformer and you can see i've got the secondaries now i did a turns ratio test on this transformer to make a hundred percent sure and this had 4, 8, 16 and 100 volt line. 100 volt line I've snipped off because, well, obviously, that's about as much use as an Astra on a motorbike. And they're, all, they're in pairs as well. I don't quite know what that's about, but these two yellows, you put the two yellows, two reds, two greens together, and then the two blacks are ground on there. I haven't got my book in here, so I can't remember without looking which ones are which, but they should, hopefully, we should just they should just reach onto there and we should just be able to get those um, we should get those connected up and then this amp is ready to power up again right we've got this amp together and boy has it been a problem so this speaker thing has been the biggest problem this this uh, bracket for the speakers sockets had to uh, put uh, bolts through here so we've put some new bolts in getting the bolts in underneath was just you can see was just a nightmare we had to take the sockets out the middle one i never got in just couldn't get get it to go in couldn't get underneath enough with the chassis here how they got those in i don't know so yes the bloke that designed this he must have had a very strange meccano set and that's all i can say when he was a kid so we're now going to try and power this amp up and just hope that it works <laughs> kind of because it's been fighting me all the way as I've said and I'm sure it's going to continue to fight me or maybe it's just given up but I haven't so we're going to get this we're going to get this amp working one way or another so we've got 4 8 and 16 ohms now and you can see you probably can't see but they would have it said obviously 1.6 amps so i've managed to scribble away the point on the gold writing and what was there so we've now got 16 on there so that's not too bad either so what we're going to do now and i've put some tubes in it by the way now that that brings me to something else on the tubes and again someone on the channel i'm rather grateful that they did and again it's down to me not reading things properly so these um, ECC 803S tubes I went on and just had a quick look and thought that these were just long plates but they're actually not apparently one half of this tube is a 12X7 and one half is 12AT7 so these tubes um, are no good for this amplifier and I thank the, uh, the guy that uh, pointed that out to me because I'd have carried carried on blundering away with them although they'd work fine in the amp but that's beside the point right let's go on the variac so we'll start with 60 volts we have to flick the switch haven't we it works better when you switch it on 118 milliamps on the amp meter including the variac so we've got no issues there got 100 volts on it now I can hear a bit of something on when I put the meter on the plate 141 milliamps And we are conducting, as you can see that voltage going down there on the meter. So we are beginning to conduct. Let's go up another 20 volts. And we've got sound.
let's go up a bit more and we've also got a ham One thing we have got now is silence when it's turned down, which we didn't have before. Mm, is that a tube, I wonder? Very strange. It's got some oscillation there. Mm, we'll leave that. Right, that's 155 volts. I wonder if that's a tube. But we have got silence now when it's turned down. Where before we got that hum from the transformer, if you remember. Oscillation going on there. Right, we finally got this thing up and running. First thing is, I'd got the output transformer back to front on there, so it was out, out of phase, so it was just oscillating and screaming. So I've just I've tacked these on, but I've got to do them properly. It's just testing. And one of the problems was, I'd got the output transformer primaries the, the wrong way round on the tubes and uh, it was just oscillating out to face. So I've swapped, swapped those over. I've just tacked them on so I had to change, extend the wires, things, but I'll tidy all those up in a minute. So this is what I mean with this amp. Just listen to it buzzing away. This is what I mean about design floor. Look at this. reason that's doing that is because we've got the cap underneath it we've got DC so close to AC on there I'm guessing that's what's causing that problem there and that's inducing noise in there we need to um, we need to do something with that because that's dreadful. I don't really know how we're going to be able to relocate those, whether we're going to be able to have to come out along here and then come round and try and get somehow get round that capacitor there. Great. So we finally got this amp together. We've got the amps now biased up properly. Found some tubes to match and we've got it biased. Everything is done except the noise issues now. That's basically where we are. But what I thought we'd do now is take this and try it on the 4B12. Just to see what it's like with the guitar through it. Try and get a bit familiarise ourselves with this graphics and whatever else we've got on here. And see how we go from there. Right, we've got this Vox 125 on the 4B12. We're going to have a listen. You can hear there's quite a bit of noise there. And we're going to have to address that later but what I want to do now is make sure all this EQ all the volumes work and this amp sounds reasonably good let's see if it does so I've actually cranked up the uh, the, the gains on this so we've got this in distortion mode we don't often this we don't often start with distortion but we will in this one <laughs> You can 
can see these EQs are really interactive, this induction system they've got on here. amp to try and compete with the JCM 800s because this amp was made in 81, 1981 so I'm guessing that's why they've uh, most amps at that time they were making big amps which obviously that was the amp to compete with the JCM 800. <laughs> sound off bad tad nasally but <laughs> transformer so it, it's got a decent tie-in on it <laughs> Thank you. 
Channel now clean. So the brilliant, as I say, there's, there's either something wrong with that brilliant channel, or that is just about as much use as a chocolate fire guard on that one and you can see now I've got this amp turned down and I've still got noise on there which before we didn't have that I was so just keep messing with these and you can see if we turn this volume up there's more noise when it's turned down so in the six o'clock position, we've got much less noise. But we've got this wire from the master volume. I mean, that's just going over the diodes. Uh, crazy! It's, it's crazy. We, we need to try and re-thread uh, re some of these wires away from away from the DC. So we've got obviously AC frequency there. AC. So we need to really redress some of this cabling in here. So there we are. I think uh, we'll, uh, we've got the amp running, and it's, it's, the the overdrive on it sounds pretty good really and, and even the clean channel on the normal setting is good it's a very tight sound when you're playing it the brilliant channel it is just too bright for me I, I don't like that at all but the normal channel on this amp is pretty good and that don't sound half bad at all really but there is some noise issues we need to sort out so I think I'm going to leave it, it for this video and then I think we'll do a part five on this trying to track down some of these noise issues that we've got so that'll do it for this one, so thanks for watching, you'll take care, and I'll see you all in another video. Bye bye for now.